Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Nerds with Friends. My name is Cody Leach and as always, I'm joined by Christian Garcia. Yo. And uh, we have a guest today, Rick Cruz, our, our uh, landlord. <laughs> what's up, what's up? <laughs> Rick's been a good friend of ours for a long time and he is the owner of the lovely 148 Studios. So. Look at this, he even set up nicely for us. Yeah, we kind of moved everything around a little bit, uh, got a slightly better filming position now that we're doing these things yeah 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 more light yeah exactly yeah, yeah. natural light we're not all blown out i learned that term from <laughs> film school i'm just kidding <laughs> that actual term blown, blown out, out? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's talking about like photography when there's too much lighting and it's just everything's like washed out kind of thing anyway uh today we're going to talk a little bit uh, about toys collectibles and kind of how the toy industry has changed from um, from what we remember as children. Um, and uh, Rick is big time into the big uh, time, <laughs> big time, <laughs> big time right. Timmy Jim. Right. Big time Rick, man. Let's uh, do it. You're big into toys, obviously. Yeah, a lot of these yeah. toys that we see behind us are yours, right? Yep. Yep. Um, but let's uh, let's get down to business as we always do, uh, and start with some. Nerdy confessions. You want to go, Christian? Sure. Um, so I, I think I talked about cursed last time and how yeah we mentioned it. I wasn't feeling it. I officially stopped watching it. And in the beginning, so I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it last time, but they had made um, Arthur uh, black, and I was like, cool. I think you mentioned that to me in one of your like racist tirades. Yes. You're like, I can't believe this. <laughs> No, on, in all honesty, I thought that was kind of cool. I was like, that's awesome. I get to see a black right. dude tell all these white people what to do. I'm about it. Yeah, I to just, bring everyone together. Right. I just feel that in the pitch meeting, it went bad. <laughs> like, I honestly feel someone brought it up like, yo, well, let's make Arthur black. And I feel like everyone was like, yeah, it's a good idea. You know, you know, the SJ dubs, you know, they're going <laughs> to like that. And, you know, we get, we get brownie points, giving a person of color, you know, a part. I just feel that there was like a racist exec that was in there. It was like So right. we'll make him a thief, right? Exactly. It was like, you know what? All right, you guys want black Arthur, that's fine. But he's gonna be a thief. And it was just like, so so what? We're we're taking one step forward, two steps back? He's like, <laughs> if you want this to happen, he's gonna be a thief. Yeah. It's like I mean, we want it to be believable, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it's like, dude, like what the fuck? Like you did one good thing and then you doubled yeah. down on the bad, like yeah, I know. I, I saw it, too. I thought it was a very odd choice. And then, like... Like, he stole Excalibur. It was like, yeah, really? That's he how he gets... stole get Excalibur, which is... <laughs> now I want to see it. Yeah, that's a big no-no. <laughs> and then, also, uh, Uther Pendragon, who's... Isn't that supposed to be his dad? Uh, yeah, isn't he supposed so. to be Arthur Pendragon? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uther Pendragon is the king who's, like, the little bitch who has Merlin working for him See, and it I, drinks the blood out I guess of like I missed or whatever. that but I did enjoy that they I think made, that's him. I, I did enjoy that they made Merlin this character where you're not too sure if he's going to go one way or another um and I'm sure later on he finds his path but mm -hmm. I, I was as soon as they did the thief part I was like I'm done. I was like yeah. fuck it, I'm done. I can't watch this. Yeah, I think it was a interesting choice. Uh I mean, I'm all for inclusion. We obviously need more of that and like you know when we talk about Arthur, everyone's like, oh, it's in England. Why would he be black? It's like, dude, it's fake. Like, Arthur is not a real king. Like, what? Yeah. That's not history? No That's not history. <laughs> Hate to burst your bubble. I'm done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, it, yeah, it's not real. It's fantasy. Um, but he's meant to be, like, the best of all of us kind of thing. The best, the you know. The best thief. Best. Apparently. Uh, yeah. Well, he's supposed to be, like, the, the ubiquitous king and everything. But. So who cares what he is? But then they make him a thief, and they, he stole Excalibur. He didn't pull it out of the sword into stone. Yeah, he didn't even. I mean, he technically got it from the lady in the water, but like not in the way in the story. I'm like, she God gives damn. it to him. Yeah, like, while it, she's asleep, <laughs> without permission. Without permission, he was gonna put it back. <laughs> no, I was. Just, yeah, once they did that, I was like, Yo, I'm fucking, I'm fucking done. I was like, I'm not, I'm not watching this. Yeah, yeah. It's. I don't know. I, I'll probably finish it just to. Who knows? It might it might be one of those shows that just like ramps up at the end and is like super you, good, but I'm you, just not me into and it. You normally on good things, I'll say I like bad movies that you can't support. Yeah, I hate them. But like usually outside of good stuff, 
We tend to agree. So if you watch it, if you're going to sacrifice your time <laughs> to watch it <laughs> and you tell me it's good, I will continue. But okay. at this moment, I'll I take the bullet for the both of us and finish decided. it. I'm done. So it's cursed, right? Cursed. 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 I haven't seen an Arthur movie in a bit, so it's well, it's, a, it's like a Netflix uh, show, so you know it's good. It's good quality um, production, I think. Like, like the special, you know, it's it's TV, so it, well, I guess t- Netflix is technically TV now, but you know, it's the production value seems pretty good. Special effects are okay, but it's just like the, the story. Scene. Story is kind of funky. The acting is meh. some. Some are great. Some are not great. The, the Arthur guy is actually good. He is good. Really that good at really good at choreography I, I, and stuff. I wanted to like it. It's just that they fucked it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting show and a lot of people really like it, but you know, it could be just that we're all starved for content too. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I'd say um a good alternative if you if you guys want to start something new is the uh, Star Trek the Lower Decks just started on CBS All oh, Access. Oh, it's officially out. It's officially out. Nice. First one episode came out last week, another one will be out already by the time you guys listen or watch this now um and uh it's funny it's kind of like it's kind of like if the family guy writers wrote star trek animated well the little bits we saw last year at comic-con looked amazing yeah As, even from those little clips i'm like yo this is gonna be good yeah i think you know uh it's definitely got a good production crew behind it but it's also really cool like there's cool stuff happening you know they're going to different planets um and it's funny, like in the in the opening credits, you see the ship they're on. I forget what the ship is called. I have to, I should should remember. But um, you see the like you see a bunch of Federation ships like fighting the Borg cubes and stuff. And it'll come in, it, it shoots one little phaser, and then turns around and leaves. <laughs> uh, but it's pretty good. So check that out. It's called Lower Decks on uh, CBS All Access. Rick, how about you? What's your nerdy confession? You know what? I'm torn because. Well, let's put it this way. This, this if you're torn, go both. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Well, there are no, no <laughs> rules here. Yeah. Uh, I went toy hunting this past weekend. Uh, went to Gilroy, went to San Jose. And nowadays, because there's no conventions, no shows, no nothing, they do it by, by invite. So they have open house garage sales, which are heavy on toys. And nice. for those non-Bay Area people, these are like little cities around us that... Like not huge oh yeah, populations. sorry, sorry, but yeah, but not huge metropolitan. No, areas. no, and and just to note, it's safety first all the time. Like people who hold these things have gloves for you to use. Like they give it away so that you can rummage through their things. Condoms, and, and they make sure, yeah, and they decided you know. to forego the kiss on the lips that is tradition at these things. That has to go. That had to go. <laughs> sorry, but <laughs> but yeah, had had a lot of fun. Haven't been there in a bit. Uh, right before uh, the pandemic hit, there were a couple of shows lined up that I wanted to go to, mm-hmm. but then again, you know, this happened. So. Got a couple of things, and one of those things, uh, for those of you who are watching, is that right there. That is a 1988 first release Star Saber Japanese edition Transformer. That may not mean nothing to you, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's it's something on my bucket list for that's that's been there for a while. So not, I finally and you found, found it, it in like one of these places. Yeah, so I was looking at the better stuff. Which one is it? Uh, that. Uh, worn down box back in the back oh yep. that one back there yeah yeah so let's see if i can zoom in on it i've been oh, looking yeah. for that for a bit in box right there are loose figures and complete figures and i found that i won't go into how much i got it for i got it for a <laughs> fair price not not a deal what's but a for fair a, price now you don't have to if you don't want to but uh, thousand dollars <laughs> no, no no not far, far from that it's not not that expensive <laughs> yeah, it's like 10 grand because the thing is like i'll be honest like toys is not one of my things that I collect so it always it's not crazy but it I find it like what people will pay certain price kind of like sneakers like I'm not a sneaker head I see and oh like god that don't even get me started on fucking sneakers <laughs> are you gonna get those Kanye West ones no there the was fishbone one that I showed you there was a pair of sneakers that came out like two weeks ago now I think three weeks ago now that were that were Grateful Dead SB Dunk lows which SB Dunks are skateboard Ni- Nikes. Yeah. They're SB skateboard, right? Um, but they look like the the Jordan ones. They're just low top, so they're not all up on your ankle, right? I'm just looking because we have a pair of Jordans right there. So yeah, it's it's definitely not those. Um, but uh, yeah, it, they were uh, they were Grateful Dead, so they were fuzzy. They they were like fuzzy on the outside. You oh, know, nice. they had like fur. And they had the Grateful Dead bears, which are the dancing yeah. bears that you see on a lot of like bumper stickers and shit like that. And they even had a little zipper pocket in the tongue that was hidden for stashing your drugs in when of you course. go to a Grateful Dead show, right? Um, I like it. 
and I was I I was like oh you know maybe I'll maybe I'll try to pick those up if I can get in or whatever, and I I forgot the morning of so I checked that afternoon and they were up like totally sold out, and I I was like oh well maybe if the resale is not too bad I mean it, they're Grateful Dead shoes like who who's who of the Nike sneaker community are going to be into the Grateful Dead? That's right. They're on sale for thirteen hundred dollars now Jesus. on resale sites. So I fucking wow. I hate it. Yeah, they were one hundred and ten dollars retail. Early board. Yeah, I know. I fucking <laughs> missed out. Sorry to interrupt your thing. I had to no, go on that fine. sneaker rant. I'm just happy I got it. Um, <laughs> and it's special because it's a Japanese release. They didn't really have that here, or released it here. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have the cartoons here as well. And you know, having grown up in Asia, it's something I'm familiar with. And the box it, is really cool. The uh, box is not 100%. But, so uh, it is Transformers, right? But it's a different Transformers than the 84. Or yeah. Was it 84? Uh, 84, no 85, yeah. yeah. So in, in the U.S., they stopped the story around 86, 87. Yeah. In Japan, the continuity uh, hit till about 93, 94. Oh, okay. Oh, damn. So, yeah, after everybody died from G1, there was G2 and then Victory and all that other spinoffs. So, yeah. A That's lot more. When did we get Beast Wars? Ooh, Beast Wars was tight. That had to be late '90s, early 2000s. That was yeah. I remember that being good. I mean, it's not as a kid, but I I don't know as an adult. Well, it was crazy to me that a show like that, like they put money into that CG because it was one of the very earliest. Like reboot was another yeah. one of those ones where it was very early CG, um, and. It, it looked, I mean, for the time, it looked amazing. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure if we went back now and looked at it, it would look like fucking garbage. But what, what was it? It was a gorilla? It was a rat? A Optimus cheetah. Primal. Yeah. yeah, that was that was the uh, uh, gorilla. There was Rat Trap, which was the rat. Dino, Dinobot. Was he just called Dinobot? Wasn't Di he the villain? Dinotron. I thought he was the villain. No, Dinobot, he was like an anti-hero. He started yeah. on the Decepticons, though they weren't called Decepticons. They were called... No, they were... See, it wasn't to Beast Wars that much. Oh, really? Yeah. It was the... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Everyone was, was listening or watching. Was gonna, obviously, it was <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I had several of, of those toys. I had like Rhinox, and I never had Optimus Prime, but I had Dinobot. His tail would come off, and it would like spin. Like it, you'd press a little button, and it would like... Like propellers kind of so, thing. So toy expert. Are those worth any money? First release, first edition Beast Wars, yes. Yeah? Ooh, you mm -hmm. still got them. So if you still have got them, probably uh, not. you know, dig through that box and see what you got. My my dad threw away so much of my old toy stuff, like I'm sure I could have retired off of some of it. <laughs> I had the original Turtle Blimp. Oh shit. Remember that one? Yeah. Where you would like hook the handle on and you blow up the balloon. The balloon yeah. was like this big. You know, I was a little kid, too, it might be yeah. this big, but yeah, you would put you would uh, attach the balloon to this handle, and you could put the turtles on it and shoot missiles That's and right. fly it around. I had that one. I had the Technodrome, where you you know you open it up, and it's like a uh, like a base inside where you can you know go inside the thing, and then the eyeball would roll down through this thing and Damn. like launch off. Yeah, I had a bunch of the cool ones. I had a bunch of Star Wars stuff too, and it's all been thrown away. What, what, the turtle stuff. I'm just curious, like roughly around. What do you think those those would have been worth? So it depends, right? There's no box. What he had, fucking. I'm <laughs> sure little Cody like chewed on him and stuff. Like. Oh, so was very so, respectful. So let's just base it on uh, the He-Man playsets from back in the day. Of course, there's a ten-year distance. See why you got to bring that up, man? Because no, my, my brother had him. No, because yeah. I, I had my parents I had got them too, rid of him. I, you know, I, I, I hurt, I'm hurting too. But uh, uh, a playset that's bare bones with damage. There's no box, no nothing. You just basically saw it in a cellar, and you just want to sell it. Two or three hundred bucks easy. Oh, really? <laughs> Jesus. And that's that's bare bones. That's you saying there's nothing with it. But Maybe the weapons it, are missing yeah, or whatever. You, you can get it for three hundred bucks. And they're going to be like, sure. Because the boxed one nowadays is about ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. Yeah, we definitely didn't have the box. Yeah. yeah. I don't have the box anymore. That's for sure. Um, well, that's depressing. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Money lost. Whatever. So Money. That's the show. <laughs> Money, uh, yeah, that's it, everybody. I'm going to go uh, jump out a window now. So... Um, Cool. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of a cool uh, thing. I would like to go on some of these hunts. And so how do you how do you find out about them? Do you have just buddies who are like on the mailing list, the underground mailing list? Or? Uh, so it starts with a couple of people just passing the word on. Mm -hmm. And then some people would try their luck on Craigslist. I mean, if they don't really have any kind of traction on that, yeah, they do an invite only. They start texting people they know who uh, left their card during the shows or conventions, mm. and then go from there. But this particular one, or these two, 
um, the, the the ones the one that was heavy on Transformers was an open house. Yeah. The one that was heavy on GI Joe was invite only. So okay. he, he'd entertain two people every hour for COVID purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that went great, and he had great stuff. So it, it depends, really. Sometimes you have a Facebook page, and you, if it's within your area, you, you just go, you just run and go. Yeah. yeah. You just you just kind of check it out when um, when like they'll post up like, hey, bunch of toys, or is it more like you know, like garage sale and you have to kind of like look at the pictures they post to see if, you know. So they're more particular with what kind of toys they got. Okay. So they're going to say vintage 80s, uh, golden age, 60s, uh, you know, a couple of 90s. But they're going to say heavy set on G.I. Joe, heavy set on Transformers, nice. Star Wars or whatnot. And then they would say, and then my mom would also have furniture on the backyard. Okay. If you want furniture, you can go get furniture. So yeah. yeah, it works that way. I would be, I would just be, I guess, wary of going to one where it's like, hey, I have golden age, you know, whatever. Because then you're like, oh, this guy knows what he's got, right? And so obviously the price is going to be a little bit higher. But, yeah. But they're in better condition that way, right? They are. So, like he was a collector. Yeah, to your point, they can read you if you're a collector or not. If you're just a reseller or whatnot, yeah. then if you're a collector, they're more open to giving you deals because they're basically passing on a good thing right they're they're passing on something they're passionate that's about. awesome yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool because you see the opposite of that at like the comic book conventions where everyone's just trying to buy something like at, oh, a, at, fuck. at sale or whatever face price and then right away sell it at the convention for yeah. more dude yeah, i nice. fucking hate that it's like don't get me wrong like i you know i collect a few things um you know some of them are are here but um and you know if i if I wanted to, like, I could maybe sell them for more than I got, right? That's we all hope that things appreciate in value, but I'm not, I'm not buying things with the specific intent of reselling them. Yeah, yeah, like let a you collector know? have a chance. If you I know, I buy it. the things that I like, you know, and that I want to hold on to, and then yeah, you know, if I if I found some something that jumped up in value four hundred percent, yeah, maybe I'll sell that and stuff. But I'm not just buying it to make sure that no one else can get it yeah. and then taking advantage of that and yeah, yeah. like at the comic con, but that's yeah, rough. A lot of that going around. Yeah. A hundred percent. I could talk about the resale game and how much <laughs> I despise them for three episodes, <laughs> but I won't cause I've talked about it before. All right. My nerdy confession, um, is I recently, uh, last in between last show and this show, I just uh, bought a new 3d printer. <laughs> Nice. Oh, did. And you guys might you, you guys might remember that I already had a 3D printer. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the one I bought is a uh, a resin 3D printer, which is really really good for printing out things with fine detail. So um, obviously I paint miniatures a lot, and uh, after a while, like you know, here and there, like a mini might, might not seem like that expensive, like. You know, five dollars, ten dollars. If 15, you get them on Wish, maybe fifteen for a big one. Well, you know, five bucks is like the going rate for like Wiz Kids one, but it's a pack of two, so they're yeah. like two fifty a piece, basically. Um, Wiz Kids is I feel like I don't think they're officially the Dungeons and Dragons one, but it's like what? No, they are. Are they officially? They're official. Like Wiz, yeah, Wiz, Wiz Kids is owned by Wizards of the Coast. Oh, nice. Wiz Kids. Oh, oh. Hey. yeah, hey, hey. <laughs> um. But uh, they also have Pathfinder ones too, which is actually a different. Um, Sometimes I've seen some of the company. Pathfinder ones have cooler ones. They do, yeah. Pathfinder is a great game. It's basically just D and D three point five. Um, yeah. But actually, the newer version is actually pretty different. I've never played it, but it just seems really math heavy, which is why I stay away. From the it. newer version is not as bad. Um, two point just came out um, this last year, I think. Um, and I played it. It's fun. Uh, there's some interesting stuff in it. Um, we could spend an episode talking about that, but ba you know, one of the cool things that stands out is uh, crits aren't just twenties and ones anymore. Like if you roll a twenty, you roll a one. Crits are if you beat the DC by ten or more. Huh. So you can actually like say the DC was ten, and you roll a twenty with your with modifier, modifier. That's a crit. Oh, okay. So or you crit more often. You crit more often. It makes it a little bit more dynamic. Yeah, but so do the enemies at that, that, you know. Yeah, obviously, yeah, the, you know, the enemies do it too. Um, but th that's besides the point. So I got this new printer. It's called the Anycubic Photon. Um, and normally it's like 280 bucks. Uh, I got it for 170 So it was on a really nice. good sale. Direct from the manufacturer, which is cool. 
Um, but so what what nerdy things can we make with this? Do dildos nice. first and foremost. <laughs> Count me in. Um, like, legitimately, you can make anything that you can find a design for, or that you can make a design for. Let us know if there's a market for nerds of friends dildos. Yeah, we'll get on it. We'll do it. <laughs> we'll do everyone a favor and not model them after us. <laughs> 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 we'll just put some tasteful branding on there. It's, like, it's a Cody 2.0. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's a Cody laughs> that size, that's like a 4.0, bro. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, no, uh, but yeah, you can do you can do a lot of different things. So the printer I had before is called the Ender Pro Ender 3 Pro. And it is um, basically, it's a filament style um printer which basically means there's a head that goes around and it's it's like a hot glue gun basically. i think my mind is still too much on dildo and that's all i keep seeing you said head and the spinning yeah yeah i mean that that one you know it's a rougher surface so maybe it wouldn't be the best dildo <laughs> well, maybe um, it would be the best dildo. <laughs> yeah i mean extremely ribbed to the point of being sandpaper but basically it's, it's got like a head that kind of like moves around and lays down a layer by layer by layer like a hot glue gun right okay. think about hot glue gun you're squirting down the layer one at a time so you keep seeing words it's not yeah. helping your cause about the dildo. <laughs> well, dude it's a very real thing you can make dildos on there i'm not i'm not making that up <laughs> um prove it next episode prove it. Well, printing. there it is <laughs> um but uh so the good thing about that is it moves very quickly and things where you don't need a lot of detail, um, it's very strong stuff. So, like, say you need you want to print some more coat hooks for your house or whatever, you can print them out, and they're very sturdy. They're made out of, like, uh, almost ABS plastic. It's um, – I can't think of the name of it. It doesn't matter. Um, there's several different things you can make out of um, uh, PVC. You can even do things like um, wood uh, filaments. That's basically just ground up sawdust inside it so it comes out looking kind of woody which is kind of cool problem is when you try to do fine detail it's very hard to do with those printers so what the resin one does is it builds everything upside down so it's got this platform up on top and it dips into this like pool of liquid resin which i'm sure you've dealt with doing with the, the dice, dice and yep. stuff right and this is uv uh cured resin so basically what happens is it dips down and there's a little LED LCD screen at the bottom that has black light on it. So it dips down, sticks in there, and it flashes a shape, like a, a cutout oh, silhouette shape, right? And then that cures the resin. Then it pulls up and then dips back down again, does a different shape, flashes it, and, and it just This sounds dips. like a longer process. It can be a longer process uh, for a lot of different things, um, depending on how tall it is. So the height is the main factor because the uh, the LCD screen at the bottom is really what flashes the image mm -hmm. on. The cool thing is if you have a really large build plate, which is the thing that the minis stick on as it dips in there, you can line up multiple models on there. So say you have 20 minis on there, if you can fit, right? Yeah, yeah. That will take the same amount of time as one miniature. Oh, nice. Be as long as they're at the same height. Right, right, right. Now, say you want to do one Eiffel Tower that you're trying to print, right? Very tall miniature. It's going to take way more time dipping into the liquid over and over again to get that height, even though it's very narrow. So, so in this process, it's making the top part first and then building to the to the bottom. No, it's uh, so it's it's upside down. So it's building the bottom up to the top. Okay. Um, but it's upside down. You know, Ugh. so so it so basically when you, the build plate dips down in in over and over again, and then when you're done, you can take it off and you, you flip it upside down. That's the thing huh. standing right side up. Okay. Though a lot of times you'll put them on angles. I'm and assuming stuff. it'd be harder depending how big the thing is because weight's gonna. I mean, if it starts getting too heavy, is it gonna just? Yeah. Fall off? So I mean, weight is definitely an issue. I mean, you know, the one I got is very small, so it's it's only about you know I don't know one foot by one foot and then maybe two and a half feet tall kind of thing. So it's pretty compact design, great for minis and stuff, obviously. Mm. Um, but yeah, weight I'm sure can be a big thing, especially if you have these really big industrial size ones that have yeah. build plates that are like, you know, two foot by three foot kind of thing. Um, but uh, I'm sure that takes into account, but you definitely like the first layer that goes down, you, uh, you let it cure for a little longer. So it gets extra sticky extra stuck onto the um the build plate 
And so um, that way it gives you good adhesion. Cause, and it same it thing with take the weight from there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and same thing with the 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 FDM printer or the filament printer. Um, the first layer you put down there, they like heat it up a little hotter, and so it really sticks on there. And then a trick that a lot of guys use um, that I've used in the past that works really good is you take a glue stick and just put it on the build plate for the first layer. And then you clean it off afterwards, and it gives you a little extra oh, okay. that makes stickiness, sense. right? Yeah. Um, now, so, question. Yeah. Can you make a copy of that toy? Like uh, the old school Japanese one. Uh, so I'm – yes and no. I mean, yes in the sense that – No, it's just a no. Just, just say no. All right. I mean <laughs> – Because I'm – what I'm – what? It's very illegal. What I'm saying is <laughs> it's, we were, it's 100% illegal. We've made some, you know, dust them up a little bit. Yeah, a <laughs> I'm Man. sure I'm sure a professional like Not Rick. Not to Rick, obviously. You know. Yeah. I mean, he'll never know. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, yes, you can. I mean, you can basically, there. you have to get more equipment to really make it happen. And you'd have to break it down piece by piece by piece kind of thing. But you can make things happen. You can print anything that you can design in a CAD file. Um, so it, it is pretty exciting stuff. Uh, I, I wasn't 100% planning on buying one of these yet. It was just such a great sale. I kind of just jumped yeah. on it. So now I'm having to buy all the cleanup products because resin is very toxic. You got to have oh, isopropyl dude, al alcohol and stuff. From working on the dice, yeah. Where I mean, ooh, your is ventilation's gonna be an issue now. Uh, I, I'm I'm making a thing where basically I have it set up by my window, which has a fan in it. So I'm making a, I'm gonna make an enclosure that sucks it out. Yeah, man. Just I mean, making dice. or I'm just gonna get high. No, no, Making like D and D dice like this, like I have to wear a respirator mask yeah. thing, like it, or else you. I felt like the first time I did, I was like, oh, I'm not going to get a mask. I just did it with the cloth one, and I definitely felt lightheaded after. Yeah, cool. That sounds fun. <laughs> sounds like a great time. It's like I get to make things and I, I did. Get high. I did get the low odor stuff, and they're coming out with better and better ones all the time. And yeah. I, I took a whiff of it today. Took a, I came in the mail today, um, or at least the resin that the printer has not come yet. But um, I took a little smell. I'm like, eh, you know, I can see it's it's stinky, but it's not Well, you crazy. haven't heating it yet, so wait till yeah. you start heating it. So are you going to Oh, well, it won't heat necessarily. I mean- It'll get a little warm, but it's not like you're not blasting it with heat. Very it's just UV. Are you going to transition fully to this new printer and just put the old one in mothball? Or yeah, I mean, so one thing is the FDM. I haven't printed on it in a while because, you know, everyone's right now during the quarantine, everyone's at home working from home on their computers and stuff. And it sounds like, think about like a, a, a normal loud like laser jet printer or inkjet printer. You know, it's got the sound over and over and over again. And some of these prints are really long, like, you know, four hours, eight hours, 17 hours on some of these things, yeah. depending on what you're printing. So I haven't run it in a couple months because I just I feel bad leaving it on while people are working from home on Zoom calls or whatever. So um, it's just sitting down on the floor next to where the new one's going to go. It is really good for printing Dungeons and Dragons terrain, like little tiles nice. and stuff. So I've been I've been doing that on it, and I I think it'd be good to keep that. Though technically the new one could do it as well. It would just be smaller pieces where the the FDM printer, the filament printer, has a build plate that's like mm, maybe like one foot square kind of thing. This new one is like I don't know six inches by three inches or something it's very small build plate comparatively so you can do piece by piece and just assemble it yeah so i'd have like to that do toy in the corner that we can yeah so um i don't know i mean i might keep it i might not it takes up a lot of room to not be using it all the time and now i've moved the space where it was i don't know i gotta figure out what to do but i don't know i'm very excited and i and the reason why i bring uh, that printer up is i think that it's kind of cool that you know talking about toys like the way things are going, the industry is changing so much that that's eventually going to be how most toys are probably yeah, produced. We're probably not going to see a lot of, you know, molded, I get molded plastic anymore. You know, yeah. um, once the 3D printing becomes more and more prevalent, so it's kind of interesting. I th I think it's going to be exciting stuff. I can't wait. I'll I'll bring some minis as soon as I actually get get the hang of it and print some out and nice, stuff. Because nice. I'm excited to see how it goes. But, yes, I think, um, you know, 
since we have Rick here, I think it'd be cool to talk about how the toy industry has changed. Obviously, you're big on into 80s stuff, but you're also into new stuff, right? There's Yeah, slowly going back to the new stuff. There's like certain new model lines that are coming out that are like they're in a retro style maybe That's but right. but they're but they're new, newly made. Yeah, so the biggest change for me is that back in the 80s, 90s and even the early 2000s that toys are more uh for general patronage. Mm-hmm. Meaning they'll release one toy and say that's basically it. Yeah. And the quality is very acceptable. It's not the best of the best, but it's not crappy. Mm-hmm. Now it's more so because of cost, uh, labor, and whatnot. They had to sacrifice somewhere. So most of the toys that are out for general patronage or general consumption yeah. are crappy. Mm-hmm. And that's how the niche for higher end series toys were made so now that when they can justify people spending more money and say, yeah, these are better toys if you're looking for better toys. But are you referring to like the ball joint ones? Like, or? Yeah, um, ratchets, ball joints, uh, points of articulation. Okay. So there's there's those, you know, series of toys where they'll have you spend three, four, five times the price of the normal toy mm-hmm. and say because you're betting a, uh, getting a better one, which is true. But at the same time, it kind of misses the point where in back in the day. You buy it for your kids. You buy it for your kids. You buy whatever you want. Then, you know, you'll be surprised when it's actually worth a lot more than you think. Mm-hmm. Or even you're just happy because it's rarer than most and you have it rather than them setting the stage for what's rare and what's not. Yeah. And them saying, oh, this is high end. This is not. You know, so that's that's a big that's the biggest change for me. Mm-hmm. which also kind of dictated the culture of resellers, of sure. collectors, or, or people who tried to go in or tried to get into collecting at a certain time. Mm-hmm. So now you're just like, um, do I go for the high-end toys or do I go for the low-end toys and hopefully there's there's some value in it? Where, where does like Funko, the Fun Pop ones, the, where does that fall in? I feel like th- there are people that collect those heavily, but I feel like, I have a gut feeling that they're never going to go high in price because they make so many. I, I feel like they're going to be like the beanie babies mm-hmm. of like collect of collectible toys because like they were hot for a second and then like everyone just dropped it. And I kind of feel like that's where that's going to go. Well, that that's where it is, at least for me. Right. A lot of people like Funko. I'm not into Funko Pop, but there was a time that it was the hottest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as Funkos go, like. The only time I ever buy one is when it's like something I really like. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. I'm not the one chasing after it at Comic Con every every time. But you know, like I got that Conan. Um, yeah. You know, O'Brien one. Those are only given to people at his shows at Comic Con. So that's kind of a fun one to have. You know what I mean? But it's like trying to like mad dash for all these crazy exclusive shiny variant ones. It's just like, eh, who gives a shit? Yeah. I think they make too many of them for them ever to re- any have real value. The ones that do have the real value are the ones that are, you know, uh, very limited run or there's only a certain way to get it kind of thing. And it's right. also a very desirable one. I just like the ones that are like not normal sized. The, like they're always, you know, the normal ones are quite like this. Yeah. And sometimes you'll see ones are like huge. Yeah. Like, all right, giant. that one's kind of yeah. cool. Like. Yeah. They're trying to break in a different market. That's why. Yeah. I think vinyl toys, because those are made out of vinyl, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that those have a marketplace, but I think that's a very different type of collector because there's no, you know, when it comes to vinyl toys, there's not a huge quality disparity between a good one and a bad one. That's right. I mean, they're just like, you just, you know, shit out vinyl, and it comes out, and it goes down you know, to paint. Paint, detail, yeah. yeah, right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And they don't, there's not very much of the variance. I'm thinking there's like another a, one that's similar to Kid uh, Robot. I think that one. Yeah, I love Kid Robot. I like. I just like their designs, which is the only reason I go for them. But it all the only also the only reason I like them is when they have uh, collaborations because yeah. Funko is all based on what licensing they get, and apparently right. they get fucking everybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, Kid Robot is very selective on who they get. So for a long time, they were doing the Street Fighter ones, and I have several of those. I have several rare ones of those um, that are really cool. But I, it's because I love Street Fighter. Right. Yeah. The other ones that they come out with that they're like they have like some Andy Warhol ones. They have a Frito Kahlo one that was the Comic Con at Home exclusive this year, and they're fine. But they're shaped like a little bunny, and then they just have artwork slapped on. Yeah. Like, it's not representing anything. Is that it's, the one that uh, Disney does? Like, they have a whole full run? They have the bears. Okay. Yeah, I forget what those are called. Um, um, but they're like bears yeah. with mouse ears. 
Um, yeah, tip of my tongue. Yeah, I can't yeah, think of We'll it. get back yeah. to it. But, um, yeah, I just – I like something that has a cool design of something I like. So – um, Toki Doki did some cool stuff too for a while. They had a Marvel license, but once they drop that license or they move on to something different that's not as cool, I'm just like not about yeah. it. You I know? think I almost got all of those Toki Doki, the Marvel ones. Yeah, they're fun. Sick. They were they were cool little like the little keychains, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking now I should probably be ashamed of like how much I probably spent trying <laughs> to get everything because they were blind boxes. They were blind boxes. Dude. Blind boxes yeah. is an addiction all its own for sure. So these are. Like, for example, these vinyl toys are here. These are blind boxes. And yeah. so that's how they get you, right? Um, with Funko Pop, with vinyl. You see what you're getting. You, you see what you're getting, but at the same time, you're not going there to. It so it, first of all, it talks to a, These are cool. A these are people. cool ones, though, because they're articulated little. They are. Boop, they are. Boop, boop, boop. So you, like you, buy, you buy a box uh, that's marked Mega Man. There you go. And you don't really know who you get, but they're about $6, $7 a pop, which is kind of painful for a small toy like that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's how much. Yeah, but that's then if how you much. Get zero in Mega Man, then it's well worth it, you know. Right. See, right. I like. The but company. when you get thirty-five doll seams, <laughs> like trying to get the, you know. Yeah. Uh, doll seam was kind of cool because it came with a little necklace that was Yoga. separate. <laughs> Yoga fire. I like. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen their collect. I don't collect too much of it, but I do appreciate a lot of Mondo stuff. Mondo does a lot mm -hmm. of great stuff, but it's because they like the shapes of the the toys are different and they're very bright, vibrant colors. So Mondo does a lot of cool stuff. And they're tiki's. They make amazing tiki's. Yeah, and I think I think that's what it comes down to is you know I'm not after something just because because it's collectible necessarily. I like I want to get something that I like. Yeah. You know something that I like the design of. I do like the Mondo tiki's quite a bit. Um, I do think they are better quality than the geeky tiki's, which I also really like. I like tiki stuff. Um, but the cool you know the designs and even their posters and stuff are just. The amazing artwork and stuff is what really sells it. It's you know, not since we're talking the tiki's. I'm still fucking bitter that at last year Comic Con I didn't get the Jaws one. They had a <laughs> cool Jaws one, a tiki with like on the top was the girl swimming from the poster. Yeah, it was like that was like a little Twizzler. Yeah, that you put for, in. it, it wow. looks so fucking amazing. And they had an exclusive one that I think was um, it looked like it was wood colored, and that's one mm, I wanted. Yeah. And every time I went, I got in line. They're like, yeah, it's it, it's gone. Yeah, it's get gone. out of here. Uh, they they also had a really cool one. Um, I think this one was Geeky Tiki's. They had the Millennium Falcon, but it was a punch bowl, scorpion bowl kind of thing. Yeah. And then I think, I'm not 100% sure if it came with it or if it was separate, but they had like a uh, Han and Chewie little shot glasses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can do like shots of, you know. Of Chewie. Of 151 or whatever and pour it on Jesus top. Jesus Christ. And light fifth, you know, so you do it. Little shot glasses, yeah. The one fifty one. It's one fifty one. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. well, with tiki drinks, you do a little rum that, floater, that or okay, dark rum. You could do a dark <laughs> rum floater so it seeps down. But everyone knows you're putting one fifty one and right. lighting it on fire. <laughs> 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 um, so I think that's really interesting. I didn't actually know that when we're t when you're talking about how like now there's like a a better quality version of toys being made now you know which makes sense though because i remember seeing a new toy like a gi joe or power rangers or something yeah. recently you know um like and just realizing that like, man i remember like my gi joes when i was a little kid or those ninja turtle toys like they were hardcore like you know it, i never broke anything that's right because they're very well like sturdy and well yeah. made and these new ones just feel so flimsy now. They're all hollow and so. So the cheaper toys or the the base toys, as we call them, mm -hmm. that that's exactly the issue. Like they look great sometimes, but you know, once you start playing with them or kind of just toying with them, they, they kind of fall apart. Yeah. But another thing about the toy industry is that uh, the access that they have because of the internet yeah. has just changed the game of what's limited and what's not and what's sure. and what's not. Right. So back in the day, the model was. If you buy G.I. Joe's, you have to buy uh, the packaging, and the packaging you have to cut something out to have the points. Right. And then you have to buy maybe 10, 11 G.I. Joe's to get the points to get the mail-in rebate for that particular figure, which nobody Dude, does. Do remember mail-in rebates? Exactly. That's yeah, fucking man. crazy. That's <laughs> now you don't do that. That's fucking the fact, like, dude, the fact that you brought that, like, just brought back, like, so many childhood Remember, memories. like, remember, like, having to send in all the UPCs of cereal yeah, boxes? Right. Exactly. There you go. I'm just yeah. like, well, I'm never fucking getting this thing. <laughs> There's no way I could eat 12 boxes of Cheerios. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's another thing. Um, now you can just go to the internet, eBay, Amazon, and just bid for that rare toy that you've always wanted. Yeah. So... It's great. That's great. If you always wanted it, you got money for it, go for it. 
but it kind of takes away that that hunt you know that, yeah that, it kind of takes away that thrill of the hunt we're in, yeah, I saved up. Or, or like I, you went into Toys R Us one day and they right. just restocked and there's that and one. And there it is. Yeah. And then you got it. Yeah. So that's another thing. And, I, and I'm speaking uh, about these changes from a collector's perspective, mm-hmm. right? Sure. I'm sure a lot of people from the reseller's perspective or from the business side of it would say, well, it is what it is, which is true, right? It's it's always an industry wherein people will make money or make more money. Well, resellers are making a killing with the internet, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Because like, you know, there's eBay, Amazon, what a million other sites, and now you can instantly see what people are interested in, see what you know what's a hot item, find that hot item, buy it up as much as you can, and then sell it, and then have anyone who wants who is looking for that specific thing be able to find it very easily That's and right. even bid on it and get higher. Do you ever and buy on eBay like a collector? I just did. Did yeah. you? I just did yesterday. Um, well. I think it's just like I bid on something and never expected to win it than I won it. So oh, yeah. What I'm curious. It's kind of what I did. Yeah, I just so. did that too. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> what? I have to buy it. Does eBay do anything if, let's say, for example, they said it's an original, you get it, and it's clearly not? Yeah. So they're not really there yet in terms of banning people who sell counterfeit or, or in the toy industry, we call it the knockoffs or the KOs, mm-hmm. right? So there's still a lot of KOs. And the reason why is that they repackage it, rebrand it, but the image is exactly the same figure from the other company well like for instance wish.com a lot they have a lot of knockoff stuff that like most of these like statues models toys and stuff are you know like it'll say like uh, that nendroid one you know the little chibi characters they'll be on wish for like half price and they look good, but they're obviously like a Chinese knockoff That's of right. a Japanese product. So eBay at the moment won't. So you're kind of gambling if you. So if, bid if on you're something. new in the game and you don't really know what to look for and how to look for fakes and whatnot, then yeah, you're gambling. Like, well, I guess my question is more of like they put a picture of a legitimate one and then they send you a knockoff one. Oh. Uh, that's possible. Hasn't happened to me yet, thank God. But <laughs> that's that's. Possible. But there's no recourse for that. Uh, you can well eBay. There, there's a. There's a process to return stuff, I guess, and uh, to exchange it. So I, I haven't really gotten to that point yet, so I can't really say anything about that. Yeah, but I, that's would make me hesitant personally. For well, eBay. I'm sure. I'm sure there's, you know, because everything's handled through, you know, PayPal and things like that. I'm sure there's some recourse if you get screwed big time. Um, but I'm I'm sure you have to be careful. Every everything I look at on eBay says. You know, careful, beware of scams, you know, check yeah. check reviews. And that's why you have seller reviews yeah. and seller rating. You know, obviously, if this guy's selling a bunch of junk shit, he's not going to be a five-star rating that's or right. whatever. You know, right. so. Unless you get a bunch of people who you pay, like, hey, write me a fake review. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but see, another thing about that is there is a market for knockoffs now. What? Mm-hmm. Yes. So if, if you buy, for example, a Masterpiece Transformer, you're... Which we're not going to make a copy of, to be clear, <laughs> <laughs> saying that. You're going to drop e- uh, two $300 easy for a great one. Yeah. And for a great, great one, maybe $500, right? Wow. So a knockoff will come out by a third-party Chinese company who makes them great quality to a certain extent, right? This episode's it's not... totally not going to be big in China. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not dissing it. It, it. It's a well-known thing, you know, but uh, people buy it. Uh, some collectors uh, really want the real stuff. Some people just like it for display purposes. Some people like them just to have them. There's, so, um, someone wants a Rolex. Some people want yeah. the Brolex. You know, there's so. a there's a show on Netflix called Slobby's World. Have you ever watched that one? No. You should watch it because he he's he's this guy named Slobby Robbie who is a piece of shit human being, but he's also entertaining to watch. So, <laughs> um, but you watch that and he has this shop. I forget what the shop is called, but it's like a retro. Um, uh, it's like a retro, uh, cons- not consignment, but like a retro shop, thrift shop almost, but it's like very high fashion eighties and nineties stuff. So he specializes in like starter jerseys. Remember okay. starters? Yeah. Yeah. And, back in the, you know, day. Yeah. the and, name sounds familiar, but nothing like popped up in my mind. Yeah. It's like the, the one with the S on it yeah. and they made backpacks and crap like that. They're like the new era of the, uh, 
the 80s and 90s. Right? Yeah, they yeah. Were, they were like, you know, they made backpacks, jerseys, shorts. Like, I remember I had I a... I think I was too broke to ever... <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, but in, in lieu of, like, now a lot of them are made by, like, you know, Reebok or Nike or whatever. Starter was another athletic company. Right. Oh, or okay. Under Armour, you know. I'd say they were a good precursor to Under Armour. Anyway, so he's, he sells a lot of that. He sells jerseys. But he also sells Gucci and bootleg Gucci and does um, he tell people that yes they're bootleg? okay he will okay. tell he will tell them it's bootleg gucci but he'll still charge them 80 90 dollars for a t-shirt ouch i don't know what gucci prices are well, so i don't well, in my mind i don't know if that's a deal or not that, that's a deal because <laughs> for fake gucci i don't it's know a fucking rip i don't fucking know it, it depends on how well it's made right but if you go to yeah. an outlet a gucci outlet a shirt a polo shirt or maybe just a t-shirt yeah three four hundred bucks yeah outlet so if you go to a non-outlet Gucci, they're probably about nine hundred. The biggest, the biggest well, bullshit there you, with there you go. I mean, that actually does sound kind of. I mean, to be fair, if it's made yeah. well, you know, <laughs> right. Well, he, he he actually goes. The reason why I thought the show was interesting is like even though this guy's a fucking degenerate, um, and he, just, uh, you, you have to watch it to really find it out. But he's terrible. <laughs> but it's it's really interesting because every once in a while he'll start like talking about something that he he knows really well like when he's talking about how the bootleg industry came up and how you know they he helped create it it sounds well, like well he didn't even help create it but like the the thing was is like you know gucci was this lifestyle brand or it doesn't have to be gucci it could be louis vuitton or um there's another one that he has on there that's like a, a supreme supreme is you know obviously you know supreme there's a bunch of bootleg crap out there anyway you have these brands that are super super expensive yeah. And people want to represent that brand, but maybe they don't have the money, or maybe they want like a fucking fanny pack, but Gucci doesn't make a fanny pack. That's right. Yeah. So what they'll do is they'll get knockoff leather, make the fanny pack, and it looks good, like it looks stylish, and they will match your Gucci belt or Gucci shoes or Gucci purse or whatever. But it's something that that company never actually made. So I mean, it's kind of interesting to look at it that way. Um, but then again, selling like a used fake Gucci t-shirt for, Oh wait, these are uh, used fake. Yeah, they're used. Yeah. They're all, Oh, I was under the impression that he, he made these. No, knockoffs. he'll, he'll go, no, he'll go to like garage sales and he'll buy them for like, you know, a dollar, $3 a piece and you'll sell them for $90. Okay. Now I understand the piece of shit. Oh, he's the worst. But, but to, to piggyback on what you said, going back to toys, right? Mm-hmm. Another reason why people go for the third party knockoffs, or not even knockoffs, but just third party companies, bootleg kind of stuff. The 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 big boys, Hasbro, Takara, Tommy, uh, they don't make the key figures anymore. Mm. So if I want, let's does say, does that mean like the mold of the, or or just basically not make them? Period. So the if you look at Transformers Generation One, there's about seven key characters that you really want to have as a toy. Right, but then they'd only create maybe three or you four. Your of them. Optimus Primes, that's your right. The Megatron. Bumble oh, they didn't yeah. even Megatron. actually make all of them. No, so oh, and then these third com- party companies would make their own molds. Yeah, and come out with a great product with maybe a, a third of the value, yeah. and then of course you'd go for it because it it completes your collection. So right. that's another market that people are going oh. for. That's fair, I guess. But yeah, they could still get in trouble because I would feel like they don't own the intellectual property. I'm guessing well, the thing is nobody wins lawsuits in China. That's the thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. What's you a know. knockoff lawsuit? <laughs> like, what's that? He's just it, doing business. They just <laughs> spend money for nothing. No, so. Yeah, they take them to court, and it's not a real courtroom. <laughs> it's a knockoff courtroom. <laughs> Fuck, swindled again. <laughs> <laughs> the walls just fall down. Are you really oh, in China, God. though? Are you really in China? <laughs> yeah. Am I even in China? <laughs> Nah, I'm in Korea. God damn it! <laughs> this episode's gonna be huge in China. Yeah. It's gonna be huge in China. Well, it's funny because uh, you know Rick used to, the r- way we both met Rick. He used to work for Apple. Yeah. And I remember you know years ago, uh, and they might still be having them. I don't know. But in China, they would have fake Apple stores as a whole. Yeah. I've it seen a thing. video of it. And yeah. Like you look inside. Them- I mean, it looks. They got the w- wood tables w- yeah. everything. Nice if someone went into one and was fooled and then, like, they were like, I feel dumb. I'm like, don't. That shit looks No, it looks super- great. The only, like, some of them you could really tell, though, because it would say Apple Store. And yeah. no Apple Store says Apple, Apple Store. Yeah. It's just the logo. It's just the yeah, logo, right? right? Yeah. And so then you're like, oh, fuck, little sneaky things. But, and then, you know, I'm sure a lot of these computers, some of them might have been legit. They have just fell off the truck or whatever. Um, but then I'm sure some of them were just fucking, you know, Rip-offs, Toshiba's, yeah. you know. Yeah. 
slapped but, in an aluminum case or whatever. But if, if you get people in and they buy, then why not do it? You know, that, yeah. I think that's their thing there. It's like if, if you're, I'm making money out of it and they can't touch mm-hmm. me then. Yeah, exactly. What's, so. what's the point? I think that is pretty interesting. And you bring up a good point where, you know, if uh, – if they're not, if the company that owns the property is not making what people want, that's right. which I think happens more often than not, you know what I mean? I think that, um, you know, and, and, you know, going back to shoes, we talked about shoes briefly, right? Like, obviously like the Yeezy is a very popular one. I know you have a pair back here that I'm a little jealous of the Yeezy. The only reason that people pay a thousand dollars for a pair of shoes is because they don't make enough of them, right? Sure. They don't, they make a limited number to create buzz, which and then they sell it for I think Leezys are what two twenty a pair or something like that. Retail, yeah, yeah, two twenty a pair. And so then curious, what would it go off? Not, not uh, retail. So so when when they first came out, the first two Yeezys, the regular I forget what the first color was, and then there was Pirate Black. That was the big one with the red on it. That's right. Um, they would sell for two hundred and twenty dollars or two hundred dollars okay. a pair, and then they would resell for eleven to twelve hundred dollars a pair. Why? Yeah. Easy. Because Why? they were they were hot shoes. Kanye wore them, and you know they were like designed by him, and they were squishy. The first Yeezys were Nikes. Um, those I'm sure go for a, a shit ton of money, and then Nike was like, "Man, nah, we don't want any more money," and then lost the deal That's to right. Adidas. Yeah. Maybe they were just like, "I smell like this dude's gonna be insane later. Let's cut it now." <laughs> hey, crazy sells, man. You know, it's like it's one of those things where the him and his branding it doesn't matter how crazy he is, people still go nuts for that shit. And I will say now that Yeezys have been out for years and years and years now that the the hype has died down you can very easily find some for four hundred dollars five hundred dollars but still you're still making over a hundred percent so when he says some crazy anti-black thing does it does the price go down or does it go higher i don't know it depends how you know how much buzz there is about it like when he's oh shit i took my hand off uh like when he says like uh slavery was a choice did that help or like drop i mean honestly i don't think it affected the shoe game because the shoes like the people who buy Jordans are not buying them because of Michael Jordan anymore. You know, they're buying them because, you know, they're it's a thing. They're not even yeah. a good basketball shoe. Like uh, I was watching that um, the Last Dance documentary. Did you watch that one? Yeah, yeah, it's very very good. Um, if you're interested in Michael Jordan, check it out. Um, but he, for one of his last games that he played before he finally retired for good, is this a Madison Square Garden game? Uh, where he, where wore, he wore the, the shoes, That's he wore right. the Jordan yeah. ones, yeah. and his feet were literally bleeding by the end of the game. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, fuck, man, you know, <laughs> uh, shoe technology has come quite a ways in the past, however many years, yeah. kind of thing. Ugh. Because you know, like people used to play in Converse Chuck Taylors. Yeah, like can you imagine playing a full full uh, basketball game in those things? No support. Now they got all these air cushion and gel. That's gangrene and shit by like the that. evening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it's kind of it's kind of interesting um, to see, but yeah, people aren't buying them because they're playing basketball. And they want them because this color was was limited or was the replica of this game or this person yeah. or whatever. Um, like the band Jordan ones, which are the first ones that ever came out that Michael Jordan got. You know. Uh, he got fined every time he wore them in the game, right? right? Yeah. And Nike just paid it because it was good publicity. Oh, for obviously, them, right? Yeah. Peanuts. Um, but you say that now, but when that happened back in 1985, four, 85, 85, yeah, right? 85. When that happened, this was the biggest shoe deal that had ever been done. Nike was not the brand it is today. The biggest brand in the NBA was Converse. That's right. That's crazy. Right. Yeah. Reebok was nothing. Um, Adidas passed up Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan actually said, "Oh, I love Adidas. Yeah, if they, they you know, if they came to yeah. me, I'd do it." He'd be like, well, Nike's offering to fly you out to Oregon. You know, just go. His mom told him to just go see what they say, and they, you know, treated him around, walked him around the factory. Dude, Nike was like, "Thank you, Mother Jordan." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's so crazy how big that. But that was the biggest endorsement deal that ever happened, and he was a, really a pioneer in that. It's what built Nike up. Cause yeah, on the same. They were show, they were a track and field shoe before yeah. that. So they said, Nike is the god of victory. They signed Jordan, the Greek god and their victory. expectation was to make three million dollars off him for the next five years. They wanted they to sell made, like one hundred and fifty thousand pairs right? of shoes. <laughs> the they sold like one point five million or some <laughs> shit like that. Damn. Yeah. So, so it, it just goes to show that 
you know, as, as long as you're making what people want, people want these hot items, whether they're good or not. Oh, yeah. That's so, nice. So, to his point, I played with these yeah. on court, and on the second day of me playing, it just broke up. Oh, then they, then they second started, day? Second day. Then they started speaking to you. Yeah, about, and I'm just apparently. like, you know what? I'm just going to keep it. That's well, going to be in here. And, that's rough, And man. just like with the toys, they have a distinction. If you want the high-end collector stuff, you go for Jordan yeah. stuff. For playing athletics or not, you go for jump mat. Yeah. So, that's what you do. question. Sideshow. Uh, is it toys? Is it sideshow toys? Or sideshow collect- collectibles. Where, where does that fall into? Like, I'm, I'm assuming the higher end because they look fucking amazing. Like, and collector-wise, are, are those sought-after things? Because I there's been a couple that I wanted to buy, and not because I I was like, oh, I can sell this for more later. They just make, to me, like fucking art pieces. Like, they look to, amazing. To me, and this is just my take on it, you know, little I know about the, the world of that stuff, I think they're more display pieces. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't think... I don't think there's a. I'm sure there is some resale value to them because they make limited numbers. They yeah, don't make a whole they lot. sure do. I, but I mean, it's. I think they also sell limited numbers too, where compared to say like you know, and most of my knowledge about this stuff is from Comic Con, and you just kind of see it first person. Bro, like they always has a line. They always sell out. They sell out of everything that is exclusive. Sideshow collectibles is always there, but very rarely do I see people pulling out their wallets and well, buying yeah, stuff. Yeah, because it's like you know six mean? hundred, yeah, thousand dollars. Well, you know. you know, some of these things that Hasbro sells are that much money. They have like the big aircraft carriers and shit like that. Yeah. Um, or uh, I don't remember if it was Hasbro or what, but they had the Unicron last year, which I think I sent you pictures. Yeah, yeah. Where it's um, you know it's this transformer that's like tall as a toddler so I think toddler like nine, nine fifty twelve hundred oh my Somewhere god there. something crazy yeah. yeah so where does sideshow fall in there like collector wise i'd say it's more of the higher end by choice kind of purchase yeah you know so you don't you just walk in there if you really know that you want something from there so like there the rolls the royce of like toys. yeah yeah so unless you really know what you're getting and they have it and you have the money for it you'll just go in there and get it but to walk in there, for example, or to go to their catalog and look at their stuff to maybe window shop and, oh, maybe I want something, you know. That's not that's not their kind of thing. You yeah, and, and is there like – because to me, I'm you know, again, I don't look into this stuff very often. But to me, I've never been like, oh, remember that limited sideshow collectible Joker that they made at 95? You know, that thing's selling for, you know, 10 grand now. Like, I don't really see that. I, yeah. You know, I don't know how much of a resell it is because of how limited it is. Yeah. It's yeah. already a high price kind of thing. It will eventually appreciate. Yeah. But it's not your everyday toy when everybody knows about it and be like, sure. You know what? Demand's really high. Let's create demand. It's, it's not going to be like that. Plus, I, plus, I'd imagine when things start at six hundred dollars, twelve hundred dollars, the the amount it would have to go up to really be worth the investment is probably a lot, probably right. It, it's it's hit or miss. Yeah, there there are a couple of toys which which started high. Um, that one right there. I'm sorry for the listeners. You got, you <laughs> got no video, but uh, there's there's an MP44. I'll post it up on the Instagram. Or just um, make sure and check out the YouTube. Yeah, so MP44 yeah, masterpiece Optimus Prime. Uh, he's 4.99. Okay. Uh, off the shelf, right? He's but, cool though. But because he's the ultimate Optimus Prime, like if you're an Optimus Prime collector, you won't miss this. You you will buy that for 500 bucks and be in debt, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, right. let me see if I can zoom in on it. Right now, um, you know, they, they came out oh, last no. year. They're already $100, no. $150 more. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. But, I, I mean, sometimes the retailers will have new stocks sometimes. Then that kind of drives the price back lower. But once they run out, then it kind of drives yeah. it back up. Yeah, so obviously the demand goes up. That's right. So Where it is, I'm curious. Uh, it's one of the predators that's behind you. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to butcher the name of this toy company. It's N-E-C-A or N-E-C-C-A. Oh, uh, NECA? Yep, NECA? I didn't want to be the first one okay. to say it. Cody, the white guy, said it first. So <laughs> <laughs> um, what what is that? like? Is, I'm assuming that's a lower end. I'm, I'm not familiar with it, to be really honest. Okay. But see, that's representation of what the culture is. The big boys... Uh, sometimes just sell the licensing because yeah. they don't want to take the hit for any unsold toys. Well, the reason why I like that company is they do a lot of 80s uh, movies and a lot of horror uh, movies. Well, I think toys. they. I think last year at Comic-Con, they did a Ninja Turtles original. They do. The movie versions, right? Yeah, know? and they also, I, they did, a th- I believe, a run of the uh, 90s cartoon, and they have, like, you can buy, like, the whole set. They look pretty cool. I yeah. just don't know if they have... The ball joints like the original ones do, yeah. but I was considering getting them just because they looked cool. I ended up not getting them. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 probably a good brand. Like I said, I'm not familiar with it, 
but then you know there, there's just a lot of these up and coming brands um, who like for example Figma who's big now yeah they're Figma, big now, but Figma's big Figma started out Aren't, really they're small. the ones who make those uh, Nendroid ones the little small no cheap so ones? there's the Figmas which are the full size full size ones. And then the Nendroids are the chubby little things. But they're not the same company? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't think so. Maybe, yeah. I just, maybe they're just sold together a lot. Yeah, but uh, to, to, to go to this point, Nendroids is, are the same thing. They used to be a very you know, underground company yeah. who maybe will get one license here and there and maybe build from that. And now they have everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, th- th- again, the big boys. Oh, don't I'm thinking really of, you know what I'm thinking of? It's Good Smile Company. Good Smile. There that's, you go. That's what yeah, I'm thinking Yeah, Nendroid. Of. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Still can remember the bear, though. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it'll we'll, come to us. Doesn't matter. Well, that's super interesting. I mean, it's it's definitely um, you know a world we don't you know I don't delve into much, most of the time. Like I like, like I said, I collect things that I like that I really you know want. And I think you know I think a lot of the stuff you got is is be the same way, right? Yeah. You know, it's all about reaching that nostalgia factor, right? Like I just I just won this eBay bid on uh, Daredevil number seven. Which is uh, the first appearance of the the red suit of Daredevil, oh, wow. um, and he's fighting Namor too. So it's like a double special issue. He so fought Namor. Yep, he fought Namor. Yeah. Like how so bad Mariner. did he die? Right. Huh? Yeah. Submariner. The yeah, Submariner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Put some respect on his name, right? He's yeah. An awesome, awesome hero. Anti. Yeah. yeah we well, turn off the lights. Namor can't see shit. You know, <laughs> like what are you gonna do? <laughs> Um, actually, I think he can. Because yeah, I'm sure he can like, smell under, him or echo. underwater or something. Yeah, yeah he so, uses dolph- sonar, yeah, dolph- <laughs> dolphin sonar. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, like I buy things like that because I'm like, I love Daredevil, the red suit's awesome, and I love Namor. So it's like, okay, this is a cool thing. Um, then you feel good about your purchases. I feel good about yeah, it, exactly. and yeah. whether it makes whether it makes me money down the line, you know, and I when I resell it or it doesn't. It's still something that I like. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think you know, when we had Joe from Mythic Markets and I brought that Beta Ray Bill, uh, I have the first appearance of Beta yeah. Ray Bill. And that's like, I like that because Beta Ray Bill's awesome and I love Thor. And it's cool to have that little piece of history kind of thing. Yeah. So um, I just, you know, I think that that's the way I like to approach toys, collectibles, things Do like that. Do you guys have like a silly purchase where you're like, ah, I mean, it's not going to be worth that much money, but I still want it just for whatever X reason? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah so I, like I mean, my, I'm sure. Mine, for example, was the first appearance of, uh, oh my God, I'm forgetting his name now, the duck. Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck. And yeah. it was him because he was in the Spider Man issue, was his first appearance. And, you know, I bought it and I'm like, I know, I doubt. Maybe, maybe I'll be wrong. That Howard the Duck will get a huge fucking following. I think I I think I have the first appearance. I think I have the first issue of Meteor Man. Do you remember that one? Yes. I think I, I think I have that. That one. movie is a fucking classic. Yeah, it's My, pretty good, right? Wait, did you like Meteor Man? Yeah, that's a good bad movie. See, so you do have a I, taste for it. Sorry, that was me. With it. <laughs> there is there. See, there's hope for you. Though I will say, I probably haven't watched that movie in twenty years, but. I mean, I thought it was funny. It was it was an interesting take on superhero right. stuff, you know. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I have the first issue of that somewhere, you know. Oh, so dude, that's Bill Cosby's in there. Yeah. He's the creepy bum. <laughs> He's a creepy bum, that's for sure. <laughs> that was a preview of like <laughs> what he was gonna fucking end up being. Meteor Man t- years after. tells the <laughs> yeah. truth. He had that dog. For all we know, he roofied that dog the whole time. The Though dog I th- didn't want to oh be there. God. You know, I think that one I just bought at a comic shop back when I was a little kid. I'm um, trying to think of like something. Something silly new that I've got. Oh, I know. So um, when Tron Legacy came out, which that's the new one, the, the, the newest one, yeah, live which they actually just greenlit number three. Number three is back on Jared track. Leto, right? Jared Leto is going to be in it somehow. Which who knows if that'll be good. <laughs> but um, one thing I got uh, is uh, the game Tron game came out on PS3. I think it was and. It um it was awful like it and it, everyone knew it was awful. But you bought but, it anyway. But they had they came out with a collector's edition that came with a light cycle, that like it's in a glass or well, a plastic case, and it's the Tron bicycle and there's a little drawer for the game to go into. So I fucking I spent too much money. For a game that I played one time, I'm like, oh, this is shitty. But I just loved having everything. It. Everything everyone said was true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Every, everything everyone said was true. But I didn't even I didn't even buy it. I bought it knowing that the game is terrible. But I wanted that light cycle thing, and I still yeah. have it. I mean, most of my recent purchases are, are basically that situation because I I base my purchases on 
either two things. Something that I had before that I lost because of, you know, Moving got destroyed, around, thrown, thrown away, yeah. yeah. And I really wanted to have it back. And the other one is what I didn't have when I was a kid that I really, really wanted. Yeah, like I couldn't oh, afford or whatnot. Dude, that's all of the, that second one is all of my purchases. You know, one thing I did buy. Now that you bring that up, the Dragon Dagger. I saw it at like some garage sale when I was like I don't know twenty three or something like that. I never had the Dragon Dagger growing up, is and that, I is that Power Rangers? Power Rangers, okay. the Green Power Ranger, oh, where okay. it's the flute that calls the that's dragons right. <laughs> Beep, beep, beep. What are the Comic Cons? Didn't they redo it? They did, th- yeah, which yeah. was recent. I didn't do that because that thing was like three hundred dollars. <laughs> it was like gold plated or some crazy. Yeah. Um, but I found one at a garage sale when I was like twenty three or twenty four, and I bought it, put batteries in it, and I was like, yes, I finally got it. Did it work? Yeah, it it nice. worked, and it would play the songs. Doo, 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 doo. You know all the cool. Oh fuck, all the cool um, <laughs> dragon so excited, songs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I remember that was one thing. It was like I never got it as a kid, and I always wanted it. And friends of mine had it, and I just I was like, God damn, I want that the fucking dragon yeah. dagger. And yeah. so finally, you know, now I got my own money. I buy whatever the fuck <laughs> I right. want. <laughs> one of the things that I really wanted as a kid, and I don't know if I'll get it, maybe just to say that I had it was a Teddy Ruxpin, and that's probably way too fucking old for <laughs> anyone. Like really? an OG one, oh, yeah, yeah it would OG be crazy. Okay. Okay. Well, well like, th- those are pretty collectible nowadays. Are yeah. They? yeah, they yeah. are. They are. Yeah, know. for sure. I don't know if I'd spend the money just to. Plus, they have like cra- If you peel their face off, they have like crazy skeleton underneath. Okay, well now I'm definitely getting one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got to get one. Yeah, eBay. Yeah, exactly. Go eBay. Find everything. What was on. the monster? There was a monster one too. I think he had like like a rainbow colored tail. It's like, oh my god, it, it, mm. he was like blue and he had horns. Oh, oh my I don't. God. I don't remember that one. It must be some blue with horns. Mexican thing. <laughs> I'll find it. <laughs> the Chupacabra. <laughs> yeah. No, that came out in 97. Yeah, remember? We did a whole episode <laughs> so on it. We did a whole episode <laughs> on it. All right. Well, cool, yeah. Rick. Thanks so much for yeah, um, coming on and talking to us about this. Uh, you will be launching a YouTube channel eventually to talk about all of these Transformers and stuff, right? Yes. So it's in the works. Yep. <laughs> you guys will see something. Uh, obviously, with the pandemic and stuff, things yeah, are put on hold. So but, uh, it's fine. In a few weeks, uh, my first episode will be out. Nice. Cool. Um, and then we'll have a couple of series of episodes to follow that uh, constantly. So we should be okay. But yeah, touching base on toys, uh, toy hunting, mm-hmm. uh, a couple of reviews here and there, depending on what comes out or what we get. And then that special uh, ch- part we're in, uh, we talk about the, p- the things that we didn't have back in the day that we can get now. So that's going to be a part of that. Very cool. Yeah, we can, you, you can join me anytime. Yeah, sure. maybe we'll bring some of. Our, I'll, I'll go back to my dad's house and see what I can scrounge yeah, up. What he didn't throw away. <laughs> I know everything growing up. Dad, yeah, stop true. throwing away my shit. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Where is it? I need the fucking turtle blip. I'm trying to retire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, Christian. Thanks, buddy, for always being here. I'm glad you had fun with your stupid little uh, Mega Man thing. I, I hope yeah. you won something by doing that. For <laughs> oh, I didn't win anything. I just said I was going to, and I, I like to keep my promises. Yeah, well, great. Nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I love that thing. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel, like, and subscribe. You can find all of our inf- information at nerdswithfriendspodcast.com as well as our uh, sponsor, FNX Fitness. And uh, remember, to all the nerds out there, you're not alone. You're with friends. This is Nerds with Friends. Thank you and good night.